Hello fellow humans, welcome back to Let's Play the Blackwell Legacy. Last we left off, we were going to the park to find Nishanti, who is our next door neighbor. Or our alleged next door neighbor. We don't actually know if Rosa lives in the apartment she's saying she lives in. But we're going to trust her because we're trusting people. And she's not given us any reason not to trust her. To the fountain. Mm. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. That is not a stress headache, Rosa. Unfortunately, when you stay in a closed room for five years, the sun gets to you when you get out. We'll get you some Ritalin. I mean, whoa. We will get you some Advil when we get back. Mixing up medications. This dog is getting up in our grill. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti Sharma, was it? This is going to be awkward. And awkward it will be. Come on, Rosa. You can you can navigate better than that. Come on. There. Ah, uh, excuse. I can't do it. I just can't barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. Come on, Rosa. You're a redhead. You have the fire. All right. Here I go. Hello? Um. Uh, no. Okay, that didn't go so well. I just need to work myself up to it. I'm so disappointed in you right now. We obviously have some sort of artsy profession. It's coming, becoming clear that we need to find another solution to this problem. If you go to the left, you'll see that the dog is following us. Maybe because we smell funny. Solution is to get him all twisted up. <coughs> and he viciously barks at oh, us. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. Vicious little dog. There, all better. Whoa. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Nishanti has the ability to oh, make Lisa you. disappear. The lady next door. Yeah. Hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No. Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. So that was Nishanti's dog. Fortune is smiling us upon us today. That was a very lucky situation. And speaking of fortune, it looks like Nishanti has some bling on her as well. Let's explain the situation. There's no reason she wouldn't believe us. He started following me. I'm not sure why. That's because he recognizes you. He's just being friendly, right, Moti? Just being friendly, hmm? That's dog See? for I was right. trying to viciously Anyway, murder. I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um, yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? That's the problem, See? He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh, so you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. A little cranky in Moti speak means that he's ready to rip my legs off. <sighs> Are you alright? I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, it's just the I sun. I just need to get home. All right, let's keep walking. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rose Angela. She lives here. She does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. I can't even decide here. I don't want to be mean in front of Nishanti. Oh, it was no problem at all. Do you want anything else? 
Milk or orange juice, perhaps? Shall I repaint the building while I'm out here? Um... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Attitude, Rosa. Yeah, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Flesh Feel free there. to drop in any time you want. He wants it. The flesh. Let's be polite. I'll think about it. No thinking needed. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? I've got my computer. And... I look outside sometimes, so that's kind of like being with people. Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes. Um, their names are me, myself, and I. Um, Go and try smiling, Rosé. It's a joke. It looks yeah, weird. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rose Angela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa if you like. Rosangela is kind of a mouthful, you know? All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. Rosa bonded. This is a big step forward, Rosa. What a strange lady. That is not strange, Rosa. Let's go into her apartment. And it looks like I've been... That door leads to my apartment. Oh, right-clicking on things will let you examine them, and that is what I just accidentally did. Ooh. Home. Thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500-square-foot room in my life. Ugh. More social interaction. Hello? This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes? I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Yes, I received it. I haven't had the time to come by, though. That's all right. I'm sure you're busy. However, should you find the time today, my entire schedule is free. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good day. Free because my aunt is dead? If I don't visit him, he's just going to keep on bothering me. I suppose I should get it over with. How insensitive. Well, it looks like the game is prompting us to go see him, so we'll do that. But first, let's explore Rose's apartment. She seems to be very good at taking care of plants. I suppose I should trim this plant. Maybe one day. Teddy bear? Griffiths, find where he is. A photograph? It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. Auntie Lauren looks like she had some zits. Maybe they both had pox at the time. No. I used to talk to this picture when I was a little girl, but not anymore. Well, that's actually quite sad. I wonder if the teddy on our shelf is the same teddy as this, the one in this picture. When I was a little girl, I'd try to talk to my younger self in this picture. I was trying to give myself advice about the future. It didn't work then, and I doubt it would work now. I don't know, Rosa. Being self-aware is pretty helpful. We have a fake plant. I don't need to touch it. I know these plants are fake. Uh, let's look at our stove. Cook? Why bother? When every Chinese restaurant in the area delivers? I will... <laughs> That's an interesting opinion. There's nothing in these cabinets I want right now. What's this thing? right here, next to our couch. It looks like a little mirror, or a gem in a box. Let's go to our computer. Oh, there's some 
writing. <sighs> I'm just feeling so uninspired today. Maybe tomorrow I'll feel up to it. But today, it's just not happening. I was correct. We are a writer. I do not know if we're nonfiction or fiction or if we're some sort of reporter. But we are a writer. Let's go to the hospital. Whoa, it's a psychiatric hospital. Our aunt, for some reason, was given, being given psychiatric care. That was a weird light flicker, also. And this is a clearly lo low-budget place. It goes from tile to hardwood floor in a hurry. It says to see Dr. I'm Quentin. here to see Dr. Quinton. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay, looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door, you can't miss it. Thanks. And, uh, how legit you're looking yourself today. Come in. Dr. Quinton? Yes? I'm Rosangela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. You got my letter, I trust? Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. On the loss of our mother? We came here so many times and he has no idea if she was our aunt mother. Thanks, but she was my aunt, not my mother. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? I'm mostly on my legs. Just having a really bad morning. Oh? It's... I'll get over it. Just some stuff I have to deal with. You received the ashes? Yes, I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. I'm... Talk to her. I refuse to talk to the picture of her. Why does it matter? There I go again, asking so many questions. You're not a patient. You came at my request. Right. Auntie was the patient. And you made a point of visiting her for many years. If you'll indulge me one more time, could I ask you why? Not your patient, sir, but it was mostly habit. Habit, I guess. It was a place to go every week. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead. Life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. It looks like we're not exactly as much of a recluse as I thought. Rosa exited her house to come see her aunt. And was not very forthcoming to the nurses, it seems. We'll give a deadpan. Oh? Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case. And now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. Wait, my condition? Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry? Did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My... Grandmother. Yes, Patricia, I think her name was, right? I don't know. I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with a family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize. I just assumed... Well, never mind. 
it doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. That is a fair assumption. I I'm glad that at least he's showing concern. Let's ask about Auntie's condition. You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I. But... fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to Auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. I wonder what she said. Regardless, it looks like she was in a... effectively a coma for a while because they were keeping her sedated. Because when she wasn't sedated, she would have crazy, outlandish outbursts. If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams, well, we had to gag her eventually. My God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. This has taken a tremendously somber term. turn. So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. This is very strange. Does Rosa have this as well? You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey. Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. Hmm. Let's ask about our future. So what should I do? Right now? Nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware, is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. If I were Rosa, I wouldn't exactly go to you. You kept my aunt strapped to a bed for 25 years, 20 years, not exactly a future I look forward to. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, 
you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh. Well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. That was incredibly insensitive. Gosh, do you have a key? Shining a light on my aunt being dead. Your schedule's free now. You have all the time in the world. Anyway, I'm feeling a little mo emotionally stressed because of all these... All these new reveals. We've learned about Rosa and her family. And, you know, that she might be a little bit crazy, or at least it's hereditary. Her crazy. Okay, so we're going to come back next time and visit our apartment. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and uh, I'll see you next time.